tonight, uh, Miller had some apprehensions about coming into this ball game, especially the fact that Ken Rummel was so anxious to go against Ethan because of that first one, and uh, he fears that Artesian is going to be really, really fired up for this game. It'll remain to be seen what Artesian does against Oster on defense, if they double-team him or just exactly what they're going to do, but uh, that will be one of the big factors in the game, definitely, so we'll keep our eye on that defense for you. Should be ready to go now in just a couple of seconds. Both teams around their respective coaches. And we'll have our starting lineups coming up here for in just a moment. The uh, Ethan Rustlers in again uh, their dark uniforms tonight. Their uh, away uniforms. And uh, for the Artesian Rams, they will be in their home white uniforms. So they are the home club. Here comes our starting lineups. Now coming up, uh, first of all, Ethan Rustlers will be announced. First of all, for Ethan at one forward will be number 23, Paul Moose. He's a six-foot senior. At the other forward will be number 25, Steve Pitts. Pitts is a 5'10 senior. And at the center, of course, number 41, the 6'3 senior, Steve Oster. At the guard spot will be number 15, 5'10 freshman, Rich Hone. And at the other guard will be number 13, Brad Pitts, a 5'6 junior. Again, the head coach of the Ethan Rustlers is Tom Miller. We'll have our starting lineup now for the Artesian Rams. That one forward will be number uh, 42, Dale Sundstrom, 6'3", junior. Again, he is their big scorer. At the other spot up front will be number 34, Steve Clyde. Clyde is a 5'9", junior, averaging 15 points per ball game. At the other spot up front will be Larry Turner, number 54. And uh, Turner is a 6'3", senior, starting at a forward. The guards will again be May and Clyde. Gary May is a 5'11 junior. And Dave Jones is the other forward, 6'3 senior, averaging 16 points per game. So we're just about set to go. Check it. We've got one change in our starting lineup now, as it looks like Donovan Wenz will be in there. Donovan Wenz will be starting at one forward, and uh, perhaps Turner will not be in that starting lineup after all. We'll check and see when they come out again. And it looks like, no, Turner will not be in the starting lineup. So it's Sundstrom, Jones, Clyde, May, and Donovan Wen starting things out for the Artesian Rams. Set to go, right to left. The Ethan Rustlers will be going there to the visiting team, and we're underway with the championship. Controlled by the Rustlers. In the front court with it, on the dribble, Paul Moose out front. He leaves it now uh, for the guard. Pitts and back to Moose in the corner. Pitts now from 20 feet, good. Brad Pitts opens up the scoring, two to nothing. The wrestlers out in front, just underway in first quarter action for the championship game. Out front on the dribble now is Steve Clyde, goes in the left-handed corner. Uh, shot from there is no good, off by Dave Jones and the rebound to Ethan. They run into the front court, now they'll slow it down just a little bit. Steve Oster with it on the left side. He's got a big wrapping on his left wrist, perhaps uh, his left wrist sprained a little bit. Free throw line with it, underneath the basket for Moose. Back to the free throw line, it comes to Steve Pets. Now Moose, turnaround jumper from 10, way off the mark, no good, and the Rams are running. Into the front court comes Gary May at the free throw line, he stops. Feeds further out now for Steve Clyde. Clyde, 20-footer, no good, off the rim, rebound to the floor, scramble for it. It's loose, now picked up by the Rustlers. With it there, Brad Pitts, and he will slowly bring it up across the timeline now, right at center court. Pitts to the right side to Moose. Moose can't drive inside, leaves it back now for Steve Pitts. Back to Moose again and now to Brad at the top of the key. Rich Hole on left side. Here's a pass to the baseline. Shot up and on the way by Steve Pitts. No good. Rebound control by Artesian. May coming out with it. Knocks one of the players for Ethan. Rich Hone down to the court, but no foul is called. And into the front court will come Clyde. Top the key. In the corner working with it to Wenz. Now to the high post. Sunstrom back to Wenz. His 10-footer. No good. Short. Wenz again will follow this time. No good again. Rebound by Sunstrom misses. And now Ethan has the rebound. Coming out with it is Paul Moose, all the way down into the right-hand corner with the ball. Leads it out front for Pitts. Oster, jumper from the free throw line, no good, he walked with the ball. Steve Oster traveled with the ball at the free throw line, so his shot will be nullified, and it's still 2 to nothing. Ethan out in front, Artesian looking for their first bucket. Into the post to Sundstrom, back to Clyde, tries to get to Sundstrom again, and it's intercepted by Steve Oster. 
So the wrestlers will again come into the front court with it. Holster still on the dribble. To the left-hand corner to move. He starts to drive, whistle, foul. It'll go against Cartesian. Foul against Dave Jones on the drive. Jones will be guilty of his first foul of the game and the first team foul against both teams as well. Two to nothing, Ethan still out front. 5.58 to go. From the corner, Brad Pitts up from 20. No good. Rebound to Artesian again. Coming out with a Donovan Wynn. Speed up now to Clyde. Clyde at the top of the key. Goes to the corner. Feed into Sundstrom. They double team him. Back to Clyde. 25 feet. No good. Rebound. Jump ball underneath the basket. Jump ball underneath the basket. And going up for Artesian will be Dave Jones. And he'll jump it up with Paul Moose. Booth at six feet, Jones with at six three. So a three inch height advantage for the Artesian Rams. Ball controlled by Artesian on the tap. Comes out front to Clyde at the top of the key, working with it. Clyde still on the dribble, and now the ball is intercepted. In the corner, the wreath and rustlers will come back with it. At the top of the key, Brad Pitts to the side, pass into Oster over his head. And another turnover by Easton. Both teams a little bit sloppy here at the outset. And here's another turnover. As at the half-court line, the pass is intercepted by Steve Pitts. To Muth, across the timeline. Top of the key, Oster, 15-footer good. Steve with his first bucket of the ball game. It's 4 to nothing. Easton out in front. Five minutes now left to go in the first quarter of play. Out front, Steve Clyde again to the corner. Wins, 20-footer on the way. No good. Artesian cannot hit, cannot buy a basket. They have now taken six shots and haven't hit yet. Ethan slowly on the dribble into the front court. Comes Moot. Takes it to the left-hand side. Now to the free throw line. It goes to Pitts. Pitts still looking inside. Back to Moot. He's got an open lane. Five-foot jumper. High bounce. No good on the rebound. We've got a foul called. Foul is going to go against Ethan. And it'll be against Steve Pitts on the inside. Pitts guilty of his first foul of the game. First team foul also against the wrestlers. Down out of 4.40 to go in the first quarter. And Artesian still looking for the first basket. From the corner, May, no good from 20 feet. Ethan is making Artesian shoot from long, long range, and they can't hit. The wrestlers come again with the ball into the front court. Left side is Brad Pitts on the dribble. Gets it over now to Muth. Into the corner, shot by Muth from 20 feet. He misses, and Artesian comes out with it now. Three on two, fast break. Up the middle, May. To the basket, up, and no good again. Rebound to the wrestlers, Paul Muth. So Artesian now 0 for 8 from the field at the start of the ball game. 4.05 left to play in the first quarter. In the corner with it on the dribble there, Steve Pitts comes out to Muth. Here's Oster, turn around from 10, good. Steve Oster now with four points in the game. Six to nothing, Ethan out in front. Artesian still looking for the first basket from the field. Pests in the lane, Centrum up with a five-footer, he's foul. Foul is going to go against Steve Oster. That'll be his first of the ball game. Second team foul against Ethan. And this will be a shooting foul as Dale Sunstrom will go to the line. And perhaps the Rams will get on the scoreboard. Turnovers. Artesian has un been unable to hit from the field. And Ethan could have as much as a 10 or 12 point lead if they would have cut down those turnovers just a little bit. May on the left side. Corner to Wenz. Back to May it goes. Wenz once more. Feed into the lane to Sunstrom. Takes one dribble. He'll fire up a five footer guard. So there now is the first bucket for the Rams. Six to three. They're back within three points. Into the front court pits at the top of the key. Three ten to go. And the ball is intercepted by Wenz. Up to May. Two on one fast break. May to the basket up and no good. The wrestlers on the rebound again. Artesian really can't get that ball to go through. And some frustration by Coach Ken Rummel with 2.58 to go here now in the first quarter of play. Timeout called by Artesian with the score, Ethan 6 and Artesian 3. And we'll be back in 60 seconds. Ethan Ball in their own front court. They're ahead by a score of 6-3. to three, Under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Hone high on the left side. Almost loses control of the ball, but Pitts is over there to help him up. Pitts in the corner now. With the, there is Steve Pitts, a 20-footer on the way. No good. Oster on the rebound. He'll fire from 8 feet. Comes off the glass. No good. On the rebound. Up. No good again by Steve Pitts. And we got a foul underneath the basket. The wrestler's really going to at that time. And a foul underneath is going to go against Dave Jones. So far, Ken Rummel has not put in Larry Turner. And we expect to see him here pretty soon if Ethan continues to control the boards as they have. No shots. Comes in as Steve Pitts in the corner. Trying to work with the ball. Can't go. 
feeds out to the top of the key now to Brad and a hone. His 20 footer no good. Rebound comes down to Sundstrom. Outlet pass knocked out of bounds, but it still will be Artesian ball. Hone's, Hone coming up uh, to knock the ball out of bounds, out of the hands of Gary May. And now uh, here in the lineup comes Larry Turner, and going out will be Dave Jones. So Turner comes in, but they take out the 6 3 Jones, so they really don't gain much in the height department. Artesian still down by three, 2.19 to go. May, left side, 15-foot jump shot, good. Gary May, his first bucket, and it's 6-5. to five. Now Artesian back within one. Here's full court pressure by the Rams. Pitts beats it up to Oster into the front court. Exactly two minutes to play now in the first quarter. Out front, Pitts again at the top of the key. Low scoring ball game so far. Neither team hitting real well. Muth in the corner, can't get off a shot. Back to Pitts, into Oster, back to the basket. Working with it, turns around, 15 footer, no good. Rebound to Artesian. May coming up with it on the dribble. He crosses the timeline, now he'll slow it down a little bit. Leaves it for Clyde, free throw line, he's open, puts it up and scores! Steve Clyde gives the Artesian Rams their first lead of the game at 7 to 6. 1 minute 30 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Out front, Oster, free throw line. Goes now to Muth, back out front. Pitts is open from the top of the key. No good, off the glass. Oster on the rebound, puts it up. No good again. Sundstrom on the rebound. So the Rams now coming up with the boards. Sundstrom leaves it in the backcourt for May. Now across the timeline. Jump shot, top of the key. Short this time. Rebound to Oster. The wrestlers start back on the run. Oster to the left side. Throws it away. Oster looking for Rich Hone on the fast break. And he threw it too high and threw it away. 7 to 6, Artesian still out in front by 1, 105 now to go in the first quarter. The Rams with it, across the timeline comes Clyde, top the key, left side Mays, open from 15, he'll shoot it from there, it is no good off the front, Oster again clearing the boards for Ethan. So now the wrestlers taking control of the boards again after Artesian came through with a couple. Muth, he'll drive the lane, puts it off the glass, too hard, no good, Turner on the rebound. Quick outlet pass goes to May. Now to Wenz. Wenz brings it across the timeline. 40 seconds to go in the quarter. We might see one shot by Artesian. Nope. Top of the key. Clyde will fire. Good. Steve Clyde is fourth point of the ball game. Nine to six. Artesian out by three. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Brad Pitts high on the right side. In the corner to Steve Pitts. Steve looking in. Back to Brad. He'll fire from 18 feet. No good again. Brad has not been shooting well. Sundstrom on the rebound, gets it out to May. 17, 16 seconds to go now as Artesian rings the ball in the front court. Clyde, top of the key to May. 15-foot jumper on the way, no good. Rebound again to Oster underneath the basket. Seven seconds, six, Oster running, crossing the timeline, looks at the clock. Into the corner it goes to Pitts, tries to drive. He walked with the ball. So Brad Pitts is having his problems. Artesian ball now, two seconds left. Inbound, long length of the court shot, no good. And there is the buzzer, and that'll be the end of our first quarter of play. The score, Artesian coming back. It's Artesian 9, Ethan 6 will return in 60 seconds. In a hurry, slow down. There's no need to rush when you... ...the Corn Palace here at the end of the first quarter. Shooting in that first quarter of play. Very, very cold for Artesian. 4 for 16 from the field for Ethan, only 3 for 17. So neither team could find a range. Artesian came back from a 6 to nothing deficit. They now lead 9 to 6. Here we go, second quarter action. Top control by Artesian. With it crossing the timeline is Clyde. In the corner, shot on the way from there by May is no good. And on the rebound, we've got a foul. Foul is going to go against uh, Sundstrom underneath the basket. No shots as yet. That is only the second team foul against Artesian. Not very much fouling. Neither team has gone to the line here, I do not believe. Yes, Artesian for two shots on a shooting foul. But other than that, no one or one shot to fouls yet in the game. Right side with it is Steve Pets. Drives, puts up a shot, and it's good. Check it, it's Moot. Moot's going from the outside. He has his first bucket of the ball game, and it's 9-8. to eight. Artesian's lead cutting out on a one point. Clyde getting harassed, not at the top of the key. Leaves it for May. May starts to drive the lane. He shovels up a shot, a whistle as he goes to the basket with it. And let's see, it's going to be a foul away from the ball against Steve Oster. So evidently Oster was pushing up underneath, and that'll be foul number one against Oster in the ball game now. And Artesian again will have it in their own front court. Comes in from the far side. May on the dribble, top of the key. To the corner he goes to Wenz. Wenz looking into the lane, trying to get it in there to uh, Sundstrom. Can't find him. May again dribbles around now to the top of the key with it, taking his time. 
Here's a jumper by May from the free throw line. Hangs on the rim, no good. Comes off Oster again on the rebound. Steve on the run. Right side pass to Moose. Five footer on the way, good. You're listening to KOR and Mitchell. So Moose hits two in a row, and it's 10 to 9. Ethan grabs the lead right back again. Just underway in second quarter action. Half front, Donovan wins on the dribble. Brings it over to the right side in the corner to Larry Turner. Turner with a 20 foot jumper, good. First two points of the game for Turner. He did not start. 11 to 10. Artesian back out in front by one point again. Full court pressure by the Rams. They get it to Oster now, and he beats it into the front court. Down to the left hand corner. Underneath pass is up and good. Shot from there. Nice feet underneath the basket. As putting up that shot and scoring was Kenny Vogel from underneath. Vogel's first two points of the ball game. 12 to 11. Now Ethan back out in front. And a palming violation against Artesian. So Ethan will control at half court. And here comes a replacement in the lineup for Artesian. Leaving will be Dale Sundstrom. And coming in underneath again, checking back in Dave Jones. Here's the wrestlers. Move from 20 feet up and good. Bounded around and dropped through. Moose now with three straight baskets in a row. And Ethan, 14 to an 11 lead. So they're back out in front by three. Here's a foul as they move into the front court. They'll go against uh, Ethan. The foul will go against Brad Pitts. Tried to reach in and take the ball away that time. And uh, Pitts will be guilty of his first foul of the game. Artesian on the attack again. Into the corner it goes to Wenz. Now to May. May's 20 footer guard. Gary May, four points. Artesian still hitting from the outside. Ball almost stolen in the backcourt, but Oster brings it up across the timeline. Here's a foul now, and it's going to be, what, an offensive foul? Yep, I believe so. No for violation now called. Calming against Oster as he crossed the timeline. I thought he might have been charged for uh, charging, but just a calming violation. Artesian back with it in the corner. Feed into Turner. He's being double teamed. It's knocked out of bounds, but a foul against Pitts again against Brad Pitts and no shooting as yet uh, check it it should be the one and one yep now it's gonna be and Larry Turner will go to the line for that one and one into uh, the lineup for the Artesian Rams number 20 Kevin Dahl checks in now here's Turner's shot is up and no good so he won't get the bonus either and Ethan still up by one Rich Hone on the dribble left side leaves it for Oster out front Steve is double teamed, can't get free. Back to Pitts and to Horn. Horn will put it up now from 20. It's good from there. Rich Horn, his first two points of the game. 16 to 13. Ethan out in front by three again. 5-20 left to go in the first half of play. Gary May out front, and we've got a whistle. Offensive foul underneath the basket, away from the ball. The foul, I don't know exactly who it's going to go against. No hand raised and uh, no number as to the uh, foul put on the board. So we're going to have to wait and check who it's going to be against. I think it will go against Larry Turner. From the side, shot put up by Muth. Comes out no good. And Artesian will have it back again. Steve Clyde on the dribble. Crosses the timeline right at the center jump circle. Still has it. Free throw line jumper is short. We've got a whistle on another foul coming. It will go again against Brad Pitts. And that will be three against Pitts. Quickly right in a row, Brad picking up number three, 456 left to go in the first half of play. 16 to 13, Ethan out in front, but Artesian can get back within one with this uh, situation coming up here. I believe it'll be two shots, yep. Two shots from the line for Steve Clyde. His first one is up, no good, off the back of the rim. Shooting so far for Artesian from the line, they have missed three out of their four opportunities. So Clyde will have one more chance. This could bring Artesian to within two, and it's good this time. Clyde with five points in the game. Under five minutes to go in the half. Cohn brings it across the timeline and throws the ball away on the far side of the court. Looking at time for Mark Bielitz, and it was over the head of Mark and went out of bounds. So Artesian will have it again. They have a chance to tie it up now. The lead has changed hands back and forth throughout the entire first half of play. Ethan led six to nothing at one point. Start of the drive in the corner by May, and he walked with the ball. And now we're going to have a replacement coming back in for Artesian as Dale Sundstrom will check into the lineup, and Larry Turner now will go off. So back in again is Sundstrom along with Dave Jones. Rustler ball in their own backcourt. Bielitz brings it up court. 
Right side to uh, Oster. Oster will throw it up from 15. No good. Another rebound. We've got a jump ball. Oster not hitting real well tonight, but uh, credit the Artesian Ram defense with really coming down on him hard. Every time he touches the ball, they're double teaming him. It'll be uh, Jones going up against Vogel, and the tap is controlled by the Rams. Left side with it, shot up on the way by Dahl. No good, misses everything. Rebound to Oster. Now the wrestlers are running again. And in the left-hand corner with it is Muth to Oster. Back to Muth. He's cut off from the lane. Gives it back to Steve Oster. Fadeaway jumper from 12 feet. No good. Rebound is loose in the lane, and it's taken by Hone. Hone now from 20 feet. Good. Rich Hone with his second bucket of the game. It's 18 to 14. Ethan back out in front by four. Four minutes to go, first half. May with a shot score. Gary May from about 20 feet out. Under four minutes now to go as the teams are exchanging baskets. And here's a steal in the backcourt. Artesian coming up with it. Loose ball. Dahl picked it up to Clyde. Clyde from the free throw line. No good. And the ball goes out of bounds without even touching the rim. But it still will belong, they say, now to Artesian. So evidently somebody got a finger on it before it went out of bounds. I'll be honest, I didn't see who got it to it. Jones from the corner, 20-footer, comes out, no good. Rebound to Sundstrom, he'll try from five. High bounce, no good again. Rebound pulled down by the wrestlers. Coming out with it is Paul Moot, crosses the time block. Goes to the corner, back up to Bielitz and back to Paul. He'll feed into the lane to Oster, to the basket. Whistle and a foul, offensive against Oster. Steve Oster, guilty of foul number three in the all game now. And it's 18 to 16. Ethan back out in front by two. 3.20 left to go in the first half of play. Out front at the free throw line. Shot on the way by Kevin Dahl. No good off the glass. Rebound comes down and controlled by Artesian again. In the corner with it. May drives into the lane. He'll jump it up from 12. No good once more. Rebound loose underneath this time. Ethan comes up with it. Again, it's Paul Muth coming down with the loose ball. Muth will cross the timeline. Two billets and over to the right side it goes. In the corner to Hone. Hone will fire it up from 15 feet. Curls around. Comes off no good. Rebound to Artesian. Coming down with the ball is May. 2.45 to go in the half now. In the corner, Clyde. 10 foot jump shot. Fade away. Good. Seven points for Steve Clyde. 18 18. We're all tied up. 2.35 left to go in the first half of play. Full court pressure by Artesian. Muth having trouble with it. Long lob pass to Oster, and it goes out of bounds. Backed away from Oster, but uh, still will be Ethan Ball. Knocked out of bounds by the Rams. Here is now Gary May checking out of the lineup, and Donovan Wenz will come in for Artesian. The Russellers inbound it to Bielitz. Bielitz from the free throw line. No good. Side of the rim. Rebound comes down to Jones underneath. Out to Clyde. Clyde will bring it in through the front court. Full court pressure now by both teams on the man-to-man defense. Clyde in the corner. Wins 15-footer. Good. Donovan wins his first basket of the ball game. And it gives Artesian a two-point lead again. Trouble in the back court. They steal the ball away from Oster. But Ethan gets it back. Now to Muth in the corner. Muth with it looking to the basket. Can't find anybody open. To Bielitz at the top of the key. Now a shot put up by Hone comes out the front of the rim. They scramble forward. Artesian controls underneath. Outlet pass comes to Wenz, and the ball intercepted at half court. To Hone, into the corner, move, throws it up from five, no good again. On the rebound, Oster, puts it up and scores. Both teams very, very sloppy now in their play, 20 to 20, but a lot of turnovers in the ball game here in the last minute or so. One minute, 30 seconds left to go in the half. As I say, 20-20, we're all tied up. Pass into the lane to Sundstrom. He's double team. Can't get off a shot. Here's one by Wenz now from 10. He misses. Rebound to Bielitz. All alone is Oster down court. The ball thrown away. <laughs> Steve Oster had control of the ball and it went off his hands and out of bounds. And the uh, Ethan wrestlers are going to call a timeout now. The score 20 20, 116 left to go in the half. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Time is money, and much time is saved when you let M&J Aviation and Letcher do your spraying for you. They have the chemicals and the fuel to get the job done, leaving you farmers with extra time for the other work to be done around the farm. Steen left to go in the first half. The score, 20-20. And back to the action. The Artesian Rams with the ball in their own backcourt. 
on the dribble coming across the timeline. Kevin Dahl, the guard, moves it to the right side. Looking back at the to Clyde, down to 105 to go now in the first half. Post ball game all the way. Nip and tuck. Here's Clyde. Free throw line. Good. Steve Clyde, nine points in the game. 22 to 20. Artesian out in front by two. 55 seconds to go. Almost a steal in the backcourt. Now the ball uh, still wrestling. Goes out of bounds. It'll belong to Artesian. That full court press works for the Rams that time as both Clyde was there along with Kevin Dahl and they put a lot of pressure on the wrestlers and finally get control. They have it at half court. 48 seconds left to go in the half. Out front again on the dribble is Kevin Dahl. Gets a screen at the free throw line. Moves to the corner. Feeds back to Jones. 15 footer rolls around. No good. On the rebound we've got a foul as they go up and it's going to go against Artesian. The foul will be called against Dale Sundstrom underneath the basket. That'll be foul number two of the ball game against Suntrum. And we'll walk down to the other end of the court and shoot a one and one. 22 to 20. Artesian out in front by two. And uh, Ethan will have a chance to tie it up. As going to the free throw line, I believe it'll be uh, Kenny Vogel. 38 seconds left to go here in the first half of play. Here's the first shot. Up and no good off the rim. Rebound to the Rams. Outlet pass to Wenz in the corner now to Gary May. And he leaves it out front for Clyde. Clyde still on the dribble, brings it to the right side. Now leaves it for Dahl in the corner. Wins has it back again, 25 seconds to go. From the top of the key, Clyde, good! Steve Clyde is hot, he's got 11 points in the game. 24 to 20, Artesian out in front. 15 seconds to go in the half. The rustlers have the ball, Muth goes to the corner with it. Tries to feed into the lane, it's knocked away. Muth gets it back, 10 seconds. Now he gets it to Oster, double team, 15 foot jumper, good though. Despite two men on him, Oster pops a two for his eighth point of the game, 24 to 22. One second left, the shot, no good. Comes off the rim, right at the buzzer from half court. And a score at halftime, the Artesian Rams, 24, and the Ethan Rustlers, 22. We'll be back to wrap up the first half action in 60 seconds. Basketball game. He also picked up three personal fouls. Once again, Steve Oster with eight points. He's the leading scorer. Second in line is six foot senior Paul Muth. Paul has a total of six points on the game thus far. He came into the night's game uh, with a 13 point scoring average, so he's about right on par for that. Next to the scoring, we have Rich Hone, has a total of four points. He's a 5'10 freshman. And then Brad Pitts has two points. And Kenny Vogel, 6'1 junior, averaging two points. And then once again, they'll probably need some more scoring out of him, too. He averages 10 points on the season, but has only that two points in the first half. So the starting five for uh, Ethan all hit the scoring column, and two of the other players, they played seven, did not score. So five of the, of the seven players that played for Ethan have hit the scoring column. Okay, now for the Artesian Rams, coached by Ken Rummel. First uh, leading the scoring for them is Steve Clyde. He's the 5'9 junior guard, and I tell you, he's really kept them in the ball game so far tonight. He's been canning those 15, 20-foot shots, and he's been pretty regular at it. Once again, he's the leading scorer with 11 points for the Artesian Ram. Next in line is his running mate at the guard position, Gary May, 5'11 junior. Gary has a total of six points in the ball game. And he is followed by Dale Sundstrom, and this is a pretty surprising thing here, too. Dale Sundstrom, who had averaged 20 points on the season per game, has only three points in the first half. So, uh, as, our, as Ethan will expect a little bit more scoring out of Oster, Artesian also, I'm sure, would like to get some more scoring out of Dale Sundstrom, who, as I mentioned, only has those three points. Other scorers in the game, Larry Turner, who, d who did not start tonight, contributed two points. He's a six foot three inch senior. And also Donovan Wenz, who is in that starting lineup, also scored two. Uh, Artesian, like Ethan, has played seven players and six of their players have hit the scoring column. So they've been getting a little bit out of everything. But both teams have their big scores that are way below par. And that's a look at team statistics, or pardon me, individual statistics. All right, uh, thank you very much, Doug. And uh, as we told you, we were going to be talking with Coach Russ Weller at halftime, but it appears now as though Russ is a little bit busy on the court because right now they're presenting the runner-up and the championship teams from District 24 with their uh, trophies and their championship medals. So we'll have to wait and see how quickly they finish with the ceremonies, and maybe Russ will be able to make it at halftime, but uh, we're not sure about that. We'll be back to take a look at our other stats here at halftime now after this 60-second timeout. 
Eastern and Artesian. And again, our presentations are being made to the championship trip Wildcats of District 24. And uh, that'll be the cheering you hear in the background as all the individual players for the trip Wildcats are being announced and they are receiving individual medals. And uh, we'll be looking at our team stats here in just a moment. Let's again recap. We're just about ready. And uh, let's uh, take a look. First of all, we'll... Are you ready another? Okay, let's go. Let's take a look at team stats. Okay, first in the rebounding department. Well, first, I couldn't mention before we get too far, we'll find that when we look at the team statistics here, we're going to find out why this game is close in the score. Because all the different statistics in the different brackets here are pretty much the same. First in rebounding, Ethan came out on top in the rebounding department in the first half. They collected a total of 21 rebounds, and Artesian was three behind them with a total of 18. In shooting for the first half, this is almost identical. Each team scoring 11 field goals. First for Ethan, they took a total of 32 shots from the field and converted on 11 of them. And they had a little tr problem with consistency in there. At one time, they'd missed eight shots in a row, and then at one time, they'd missed or made four shots in a row. So they've been pretty much hot and cold and more cold than anything in that first half. Meanwhile, for the Artesian Rams, as I mentioned, they shot the same number of or made the same number of field goals as Ethan, but they shot two more shots, 34 from the field, 11 for 34, for a 32 percent. And Artesian was lucky that uh, they had a few turnovers on the part of Ethan, or they'd probably got blown out in the early minutes of that first quarter. They missed their first eight shots from the field and 10 of their first 11, as they were really cold. And they started to warm up a little bit right before the half, though, as they made about four out of their last seven. Okay, in foul shooting, we didn't see very much activity at the foul line, as we have in certain games throughout the tournament. Ethan only went to the line a total of one time, so uh, they missed that free throw. And then Artesian went to the line five times, converting two of those. In the turnover department, this is what re has really hurt Ethan. They weren't able to take advantage of those uh, that cold shooting by Artesian in the opening minutes. They had ten uh, turnovers for the first half, while Artesian... Artesian was committing six turnovers, and that's the team stats. Okay, thank you very much, Doug. The two teams back out on the court now, and we'll be set to go with the second half of play. The score right now, Artesian 24, Ethan 22. We'll be ready after this 60-second timeout. There's nothing quite like money in the bank. It's your symbol of security and good money. Free throw line jumper by Clyde rolls out after almost dropping through, and Oster controls the boards again. He must have about 75% of those rebounds for Ethan. Moose high on the right side, 18-foot jumper short off the front, Clyde on the rebound. Outlet pass goes to May. May on the run, top of the key, he'll slow it down a little bit now. Looking inside, can't find anybody, so he leaves it back for Clyde. Lob pass into Sundstrom, side of the key, one dribble, fakes, puts it up now, good. Dale Sundstrom, fifth point of the ball game for him, 26-22. Artesian out in front by four. Ethan beats the full court pressure, and into the front court comes Paul Moose with it. Still handling it down into the right-hand corner, and he'll shoot it up from 20 feet. No good. Sundstrom on the rebound. Dale Sundstrom looking for the clearing pass. Gets it to Clyde. Right side now to May. Ball tapped away in the lane. May gets it back, shoots it up. No good. Rebound put up by Sundstrom, and he scores. Dale Sundstrom with the first uh, two baskets here in the second half, and he has now a total of seven points in the game, 28 to 22. Oster, side of the key, fakes, goes up, the ball knocked away, but a foul is going to be called. It'll go against Donovan Wenz. Wenz sneaking in on Oster that time, but he got a piece of the arm as well as Steve was going up with the shot. And uh, it will not be, though, in the act of shooting. They say he got him before the shot. So the Ethan Rustlers have it again from the top of the key. Hone shoots, comes out no good. Rebound cleared by Jones up front. Out to Clyde again. Across the timeline to the right side. All the way to the corner. Fires it up for 15. No good. Rebound tapped up once and now pulled down by Ethan. Muth starting out on the run again. Muth down to the right-hand corner with it. He's open from 20. Looks to shoot. Doesn't. Goes to Hone. Back to the top key to Pitts. In the lane to Oster. Back to Muth. This time he'll shoot from 15. It's short. Rebound again to Sunshine. Outlet pass. Two on one fast break for Artesian. Jones in the corner now to slow it down a little bit, wait for some help. Leaves it for Wenz, fadeaway jumper is good, and he's fouled as well. Donovan Wenz hits from 18 feet in the corner. The foul will go against Paul Muth. That'll be just number one against Muth, but a three-point play opportunity here for Donovan Wenz. That was his second bucket of the ball game, and it makes it 30-22. Artesian out in front by eight points. 
Here's the shot. Good. So it's a nine-point lead. Runs now with five points in the game. 5.40 to go. Third quarter of play. Oster helping out on the press across the timeline with it. Stops now at the top of the key. Leaves it out there for Brad Pitts. Pitts looking inside, trying to work against the zone defense of Artesian. Artesian making Ethan shoot from the outside. And they haven't been hot either, so they're having their problems definitely. In the corner, Muth with it again. Long pass out in front to Pitts. Free throw line. Muth tries to drive. Is cut off to Vogel. Back again to Pitts. And that zone defense really tough. Here's Hone from the side. 15 footer no good. Rebound comes down to the Rams. They own a nine-point lead with 5.05 to go in the third quarter. Clyde at the free throw line. He'll jump it from there. No good off the front of the rim. Rebound comes down. Hooker on the way. Good. Hook shot good by Dave Jones. His first basket of the ball game. And we've got a timeout called by Ethan Russler. The Artesian Rams starting to blow it open. They lead 33 to 22. 4.55 to go in the third quarter. We'll be back in 60 seconds. At Chemicals, bulk delivery, custom grinding and mixing. Back to the action, and the Ethan Rustlers are tied up as they pass the ball inbound. So we'll have a jump ball coming up at the free throw line of Ethan. Oster will go up against Gary May. Oster should be able to handle it, and he does. Gets it outside to Rich Hone. Back to Oster, it comes high on the right side. Looking in, down in the corner, down to Muth. Muth fakes, uh, but can't go underneath with it. Cut off there, guarded closely by Jones in the corner. To the top of the key, it comes Oster again, working with it, one-on-one. -on -one. He'll shoot it up from the top of the key, rolls around, no good. Comes off, rebound to Artesian. Coming down with it is Sundstrom. Long pass to Clyde, all alone up and in. Steve Clyde now with 13 points in the game. 35 to 22, Artesian. Moose on the run, left side, shot is up and good. So finally, Ethan manages to hit. From the left side, Kenny Vogel pouring one in his fourth point of the game. Ethan had missed nine shots in a row up to that last basket. Clyde out front on the dribble. 3.50 to go now in the third quarter. In the corner, May starts to drive the baseline, but he walked with the ball. Dragged that pivot foot before he laid the ball down on the court. 3.50 is a set to go here in the third quarter. 35-24, Artesian out in front by 11, and they appear to be in command right now. On the dribble, Brad Pitts, top the key, going against that zone defense again. Remember that 1 2 2 that's so effective. Steve Oster still on the outside. They can't penetrate underneath. Here's Pitts from the outside. 15 footer, no good. Rebound comes down, controlled by Jones underneath again. And the Rams are doing a good job on the boards. They lead right now 28 to 24 in the rebound department. In the corner, where it is when speed into the lane. Jones, turnaround jumper is short this time, and little Brad Pitts comes down with the rebound. Pitt starts out with it, crossing the timeline. To the corner, hole, long 30-footer is no good. Curls around and comes out, and we've got a foul. Foul will go against Steve Oster, and that should be number three against Oster. That's right. So he will also leave the ball game now, and we'll have a couple of replacements coming in. Also, Larry Turner is going to check back in for Artesian, and uh, Dale Sundstrom is going to go out of the lineup. Mark Bevitz is one of the replacements in for the Ethan Rustlers. And uh, let's check the other one. Kenny Vogel in there. He was in there. So uh, we'll get to that other one in just a moment. We'll have to find out who it is. On the dribble out front is Kevin Dahl. Here's a turnaround jumper from the lane. No good by May. And it comes out controlled by Ethan. Ethan on the run. Again in the front court they come with it. Start at the top of the key is Paul Moose. He goes on the left side to Rich Hone. Hone looking in, no one open, Oster out of the lineup now, so Easton could be really hurting for uh, some shooting power from the outside, and here's a steal by Artesian, all the way down, Gary May scores! <laughs> Gary May, is eighth point in the ball game, 37-24, the Rams blowing it pretty wide open right now, 2.20 to go in the third quarter of play, in the corner with it, Kenny Vogel, out to Muth that comes, across to Mark Bielitz, Bielitz looking in the lane for somebody, and we've got a whistle and a timeout is going to be called on the court by Coach Tom Miller and the Ethan Rustler. The score, Artesian 37, Ethan 24. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Take the basket. It'll go against Artesian, foul against Dave Jones on the inside. Jones guilty of foul number three against him in the ballgame. Artesian really pretty foul-free so far. Sundstrom has a couple, Jones has three, and that's about it. 
From the free throw line, Paul Muth. He's got a total of six points in the game. His shot is up, and it is good as it crawls through. 20, 37 to 24. Second shot uh, by Muth. He is up and on the way, and this one again is good. Muth with seven points in the ball game now with 2.05 to go in the third quarter. 37-25, Ethan within eight points. Clyde out front on the dribble, top of the key. Ball stolen away at the free throw line. With it is Vogel, and he is going to be fouled as he broke free. That's about all Steve Clyde could do. Otherwise, Vogel would have been able to go down court and just lay it right up for an easy basket. So Clyde will be guilty of just foul number one in the game. No problems for him. And uh, no shots either. That's only the third team foul of the second half against Artesian. Thrown in from across the far side. On the drive. Shot put up by Billets. Comes out no good. Rebound underneath control by May. He runs it out in a hurry. Long pass down court to Dahl in the corner. Dahl will fire it up. Short. No good. Rebound controlled by Jones. He puts it up and he's fouled. Foul against Steve Oster. And that should be number four against Oster. And a player comes running off the bench to the score table to get Oster out of that lineup. Checking back in will be Kenny Vogel for Ethan. Oster goes to the bench. 138 left in the third quarter with four fouls. So this could spell a lot of trouble now for Ethan. And they are ready down by 12 points. From the line, Jones there. His first shot no good. Short. Jones with just two points in the game. But he's been very effective on the board so far. He'll have another one coming on the two-shot foul. Setting the basket up, and it is good this time. Three points for Jones, and here comes a replacement into the lineup now as Sundstrom will check back in, and Dave Jones will go out. Easton ball, their own backcourt. Full-court pressure applied by the Artesian Rams. Muth back there against the press. He's cut off, double team now, gets it up to Vogel, and across to the other side to Hone. Hone in the corner, and the ball is intercepted. Looking for Bielitz, and Gary May came up with the pass in the corner. Artesian slowing it down. Now into the front court to Kevin Dahl, left side. Free throw line, jumper on the way by May is good. <laughs> Gary May with 10 points, and Artesian now up by 15 at 40 to 25. Pass knocked out of bounds by the Rams, still will belong to Ethan, right at midcourt. Gary May there to knock it out. Good defense by him. 110 to go in the quarter. Moot from the corner, 20 footer, short. Rebound the Rams. May is there again. Gary on the dribble, he'll slow it down a little bit now. Artesian can afford to take their time. To Clyde, he throws it up from 10. Off the front of the rim, rebound goes to Ethan and a foul underneath. It's going to go against Larry Turner. Turner will be guilty of his first foul of the ball game. And from the backcourt, Ethan again will have it. Will take, I believe, two more fouls for, our, for Ethan to be a no check at one more for Ethan to be in that one on one shooting situation. Hold on the left side. A Bielitz top the key into Muth. Turner on jumper. Free throw line. Comes off up the back of the rim. No good. And we've got a whistle on the rebound. There's going to be a foul underneath again against Larry Turner. So he picks up a couple of quick ones. His second one in the ball game. And this should be a one-on-one -on -one shooting situation now. And Turner will be replaced. Dave Jones coming back in. Both players at 6'3". So Artesian doesn't lose anything in the height department. Unless something drastic happens here to change the course of events. Looks like Artesian should be able to come away with a victory right here. They've got a 15-point margin. Shot is up and good by Kenny Vogel. That's his fifth point of the game. He'll have one more now on the bonus. 45 seconds left to go, third quarter. Vogel up. This time it rolls off the left side. No good. Rebound comes down to Dave Jones. Long outlet pass. I'm almost over the head of Gary May, but he brings it down to the free throw line. Sets the screen up for Clyde. Clyde slows it out and dribbles outside at the top of the key. Down to 30 seconds to go in the quarter. And in the doll and doll travel with the ball in the corner. Started to drive their basket, and he walked with it. That is now turnover number nine in the game against Artesian as compared with 12 against the Ethan Rustlers. So really a pretty well-played ball game up to this point. Inbounds pass comes to Muth across the timeline on the right side. Muth working one-on-one -on -one against the doll. Can't go inside now and leaves it on the far side of the court for Hone. Back to Bielitz at the top of the key. To Muth again. 14 seconds. Muth from 15 feet. Comes way out. No good rebound. Still goes to uh, uh, Ethan. Underneath. Vogel lays it up. Misses the wide open layup. Six seconds to go. Up to Dahl. Four seconds. Three. To the basket. Lays it up. He scores and he's fouled. <laughs> Kevin Dahl all the way down on the fast break. Puts the ball up. He scores. He's fouled. He'll have a chance for a three-point play. But just two seconds left to go now in the third quarter. 
42 to 26. Artesian starting to pull away now, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a long road back for the wrestlers. The shot is up and good. So it's 43 to 26. Two seconds left. Inbound pass to Bielitz. One second, and he can't get off the shot, and that will be the end of the third quarter. Artesian 43, Ethan 26. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Now is the time to order your steel grain and storage drying bins from the Farmer's Elevator of Mount Vernon. When you get your steel grain bin from the Mount Vernon Farmer's Elevator, it's fully constructed right on your farm and ready to use when they leave. The Farmer's Elevator in Mount Vernon also has on hand a good supply of lumber for your spring construction needs. They also have... I believe this third quarter shooting, Artesian 50%, 8 for 16... Horn with the ball down off the tip and scores on a layup, so we'll give you those stats in just a minute. Rich Horn with six points now in the game, 43 to 28. Artesian still out in front by 15. In the corner with it, Gary May, long 25 footer, no good this time. On the rebounds, tapped up, May gets it back. Into the corner, shot by Jones, 10 for the goal. Jones with five points in the game, full court pressure again by Artesian. That third quarter shooting for Ethan, one for 18. I don't believe it. In the corner, Steve Pitts. Steve will put up the shot from 20 to score. Two points for Steve, so the two first buckets put in by Ethan. So perhaps they're coming on back a little bit, but they've got a long way to go. They're down by 15, start in the fourth quarter. From the free throw line, Wens, no good. Rebound control by Oster underneath. He's got four fouls. Long pass down court, Booth fakes, puts it up. Good, he's fouled. Booth puts it up, he scores, and he's fouled. So uh, Ethan is coming back into the game now a little bit. 45 to 32, and with that series of events, Coach Ken Rummel of Artesian wants a timeout. 7:05 to go in the game. 45-32. We'll be back again after this 60-second break. The next sign is three-point play, so it's now 45-33, and Ethan's still in the ball game. Only 12 points down, and a lot of time left. Six minutes and 50 seconds. Gary May, top of the key, feeds inside for Sundstrom. Ball knocked away, but controlled by Kevin Dahl. Dahl drives, he's cut off, and back to May, it comes right to top of the key. Artesian might slow down their offense a little bit now, take a little more time. Dahl in the corner, pass into the lane, and gets there to Jones. Loose on the floor, they scramble, jump ball. Through the hands that time of Dave Jones, and about five players stacked up on the floor. We'll have a jump ball coming up at the free throw line of Artesian. Here comes Steve Clyde back into the game, and Kevin Dahl will go out at the guard spot. 6.37 left to play in the ball game. Jump ball is up. Clyde controls out front. He will slow it down, take his time now, and dribble it around. He's just waiting for somebody to pick him up. Now they come out and put on the man-to-man press. 6.28 to go in the corner. It goes to Jones. Back out front again to Clyde. They'll weave it around the outside for a little bit. Clyde still on the dribble. Comes to the near side of the court and onto the far side and starts to head back again. Putting on an exhibition. Looks like the Harlem Globetrotters out there. Paul Muth is chasing all over the place. Can't get the ball away. Now Clyde gives it to, to Jones and gets a return pass. Still out there. Be a long stall if Artesian plans to do it for the rest of the ball game. Clyde double team. We've got a whistle and a foul. Foul is going to go against Paul Muth. That will be number three in the game against Muth. And at the line, Steve Clyde for the one and one. So if the Rams can hit on these one and ones, they should be able to stay out of too much difficulty. Clyde so far with 13 points. Here's his first shot. Good. 14 points for Steve. 46 to 33 now the score. Second one on the way by Clyde is also good. 15 points for Steve Clyde, leads all the scores for both the teams. Six minutes to go in the game, 47-33. to 33. Out front, Rich Hone, looking underneath for Oster, can't find him. Now Steve comes out to get the ball at the top of the key. Takes it to the left-hand corner, can't get off the shot. Back to Hone, holding the ball above his head at the top of the key, back to Oster. Oster will try and, and drive, 10-foot jump shot, no good. Wave on control by the Rams. Tied up underneath those Jones, and they steal the ball away. Bogle under the move, lays it up, misses the layup. Still loose under the basket, and now Artesian comes away with it. Outlet pass, knocked away and out of bounds. Still will be Ram ball. On the defense that time, Oster knocked the ball out of bounds. But Artesian will throw it in from the half-court line, and they want another timeout. Coach Ken Rummel calling it. 5.31 to go in the game. 
47-33. Artesian out in front. We'll be back in Trip. 60 seconds. Yes, Trip has every... ...to the action at the Corn Palace. And the ball is knocked out of bounds again on the inbounds pass from the Rams. So Steve Clyde will again throw it in from the near side of the court. Five minutes, 30 seconds to go in the game. Artesian with a comfortable 14-point lead. In the corner to Gary May, knocked away from him by Oster. Still will be Ram ball. We're going to have a replacement coming in as Mark Bilich will check back into the game for Ethan. And let's see who's going to leave. Steve Pitts will go out of the lineup. So Bilich comes in, and they will lose a little bit in the height department, about three inches or so. Clyde will throw it in, comes into the corner to Donovan Wenz. He's double teamed, and here's a steal by Muth into the front court, and it's taken back by May, but a traveling violation is going to be called against two, against Muth, so it will be still Artesian ball. The whistle evidently blew before May came up with that loose ball. Artesian throwing it in from half court. Comes in to Clyde, far side. He'll again put on a little dribbling exhibition out front at the top of the key. Trying to stall away some time. Now gets it away in the corner to May. May starts to drive. He walks with the ball. Still 47 to 33. Artesian out to a comfortable lead. 5.05 left to go in the game. Right hand corner pass intercepted by Wenz. Wenz across the timeline with it. Three on two, stops at the free throw line. He'll slow it up again. Out to Jones, way out at the top of the key. Corner again to Wenz. Lob pass underneath to May. Leaves it at the free throw line. Shot on the way by Sundstrom, no good. Jones gets the rebound now. Feet underneath. Shot by Clyde is good. Steve Clyde, 17 points in the game. Fine performance by him. And the ball knocked away by the Rams as into the front court come the Rustlers with it. Still will be Ethan Ball. Another replacement coming into the lineup for Ethan. It'll be Steve Petz back into the lineup, and Mark Bielitz will not go out. So Mark only saw about 30 seconds of action. Muth with it high on the right side. Top the key to Hone. In the corner, Steve Pitts. Steve will throw up a shot from 15. No good. Short of everything. And the rebound pulled down in there by Dave Jones again. Jones double team, looking for some help. Gets it to May. May stops at the timeline. Almost an over and back violation, but he gets it up across. In the corner, Donovan Wenz, and Artesian again will slow it out a little bit, down to 4.15 to go in the game. In the corner once more, Jones, the ball knocked away, it goes out of bounds, and it still will belong to Artesian. Easton trying everything they can, they're pressing all over the place, trying to knock the ball away, but uh, time's starting to run out on them, they're down by 16 points, with just over four minutes to play. May, high on the left side, takes it out to the top of the key, double team, and he falls down and travels with the ball. Slipped right down in the court that time. I don't know if there was a wet spot there or something, but uh, lost his footing and went right down to the court on his backside. 49 to 33 and 408 to play. Ethan Ball at midcourt. On the dribble into the corner goes Muth. Feet underneath to Steve Pitts. He's got position. Tries the lamp and it's blocked by Sundstrom. Outlet pass comes to Wenz. Left side to the top of the key. Now over to the right hand side with it is May. Back out front it comes to Jones. To May again. May and uh, Jones will play catch at the top of the key for a little bit. 3.45 to go. In the corner again now to Donovan Wins. Back out to Clyde across to Jones. Moving it around the perimeter. Wasting as much time as possible. And the rustlers are frustrated. There's not too much they can do. Three minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the game. Clyde to the free throw line to May. Five-foot jumper is no good. Rebound control by Oster. Far side of the court. Steve across the timeline with it. Double teamed in the corner, but he gets it to Muth. Near side, now to Hoon. He'll try from 15. It's blocked, but a foul is going to be called. And I really don't know where they got that foul from, but uh, they call it anyway. I guess it doesn't make that much difference as time is running out, but the foul went against Dave Jones, and it sure looked like a clean block to me, and then apparently to everybody else in the corn balance. You heard the groans when they called it. Two-shot shooting foul coming up now for Ethan as Rich Hone is at the line for the two shots. First one up, and no good off the back of the rim. Hone with six points in the game. 3.17 left to play. 49-33, Artesian out in front. Second one is good by Rich. Only one player in double figures for Ethan, and that is Paul Muth with ten points. Oster has been off on his shooting just about all night long. Up front, Steve Clyde. From the top of the key, he fires and scores. Clyde has been the big man for Artesian. 19 points in the ball game. Three minutes now to go. 51-34. In the corner, Steve Pitts from 18. No good. Rebound underneath and a foul called. It'll go against Artesian. 
The foul against Steve Clyde, and that will be his second of the ball game. At the free throw line this time, Kenny Vogel for the Rustlers. 2.56 left to go in the game. Vogel for the one and one. First shot is up and good. Vogel will get one more now. He has six points in the game. Pretty much all decided here. Artesian out in front by 16 points with just 2.56 left to play. Vogel second shot, good again. Seven points, and here comes the replacement in for uh, Ethan. Glenn Erpenbach will check in, and it looks like Vogel will go out of the lineup. For the Rams in the backcourt, it's uh, Dahl with it, full-court pressure. He gets it up to Wenz. The ball knocked out of bounds now. Goes into the crowd, but it'll still be Ram ball at midcourt. Clock stopped with 2.50 to go. Shouldn't say clock stopped. Heaven pray we don't have another uh, stoppage here and wait another 20 minutes for the clock to get repaired like we did in the first game. Ball out of bounds again off the Ethan Rustlers on that pressure. But this time they say it went off of Donovan Wenz. And I don't know, I'll have to disagree with that call as well, but as I say, it doesn't make too much difference. It appears to be Artesian's ball game all the way. Muth into the front court, leaves it on the left side for Erpenbach. Fakes can't get off a shot, Sunkstrom all over him. To the free throw line, now Hohn will fire it up. He misses. In the lane, ball is loose, picked up by Artesian. Fast break, Dahl all alone, lays it up and scores. Kevin Dahl, five points in the game, 53 to 36. 2.20 left to go now. In the corner, Muth fakes once, gets his man to go up, feed to Oster, jumper good. Steve Oster from 10 feet away now, he is in double figures with 10 points. 53 to 38, 210 remaining. Into the front court, ball stolen away from Clyde, Oster picks it up. He'll dribble over to the left side, comes across the timeline, behind the back dribble, has to stop at the free throw line, to the right side to Steve Pitts, 18 footer, no good off the back of the rim, rebound to uh, Muth, he tries it, shot blocked by Sundstrom, Muth underneath and Sundstrom picks it up. Up to Steve Clyde, and he almost throws the ball away, but makes a nice save across the far side. To Dahl, back out it goes to Clyde, and now we've got a whistle, and let's see what the call is going to be. Foul against Ethan. Foul will go against Paul Muth. Muth now guilty of his fourth foul of the ball game, and it'll be a one and one situation coming up. Kevin Dahl at the line for Artesian. Just 1.43 left to play. Again in our first game tonight, the Trip Wildcats winning it, the District 24 Championship, 62 to 56, 18 and 5 on the season. Shot is up and no good by Dahl. Comes out, rebound to Oster. 140 now left to go. Long pass up court in the corner, taken away by Clyde. There's a fast break. Wins all alone to the basket. He scores. Donovan wins seven points in the game, 55 to 38. 125 to go. Here's a whistle and a timeout. Timeout called by Ethan. They're down 55 to 38 with a minute and a half to go. We'll be back in 60 seconds. It may not look like. Still on the dribble. Artesian by 15. The Jones in the corner. Working one on one. Now stops it. Back out front. It comes to Clyde at the half court line. 49, 48 seconds left to play. Right side to Dahl. Back to Clyde it comes. Starts to drive. Whistle and a foul against Ethan. All academic now as Clyde will go to the line for the one and one. 43 seconds left to go on the clock, and the Artesian Rams are the winners of the District 20 competition. Ethan was made the early favorite, but a lot of people thought Artesian too might make it. Uh, these teams were pretty evenly matched. Here's Dahl's shot, or rather Clyde's shot, comes out no good. Rebound to Oster, he'll bring it across the timeline himself. 37 seconds to go. Oster from the free throw line, good again. So Steve getting his points up there now. He's got 14, 55 to 42 the score. Clyde is deliberately fouled right at the half-court line. Check at Gary May, and May will go to the line. Really not too much sense to this fouling with just 30 seconds left to go. There's no way Ethan's going to get back. They're down by 13 points in the game. Even if Artesia would miss all their shots, they couldn't shoot that fast to get back in it. At the free throw line, Gary May. One and one. First shot is up and no good. Check at two shots. They'll call the intentional foul for two shots. May will also get the second one. Up and on the way, and it's uh, no good again this time. So May stays at 10 points. 26, 25 seconds to go. Oster out front. Pass into the lane. Intercepted by Jones. He's alone there. Feeds off in the backcourt. Sundstrom with it to the midcourt line. Double teamed. Another foul against Ethan. 17 seconds to go. And again, Artesian will go down and shoot it up. Everybody in the corner of Dallas knows the Artesian Rams have won. It's just a matter of what the final score is going to be. 
55 to 42 right now with Dale Sundstrom on the line. He'll have the one and one, no intentional foul this time. Studying the basket, shot is up and rolls around, comes off no good. Rebound to Oster, 14 seconds as he brings it across the timeline. In the corner to uh, Hone, back out it comes to Oster. Feet into the lane now, with it is open back. Here's a shot from the right side, comes off no good. Rebound attempt out of bounds, it'll belong to Ethan. Three seconds left to go on the clock. Ethan will throw it in from underneath their own basket. It's Artesian with a big 13-point margin. Comes into Oster, throws it up good, and there's the horn. And that will be the ball game. The final score, the Artesian Rams 55 and the Ethan Wrestlers 44. And Artesian wins the District 20 competition for 1974. They will advance to Region 5 play now in Sioux Falls a week from uh, this weekend in Sioux Falls and a number of tough teams involved there, but I'm sure Artesian will represent District 20 very, very well. We'll be back to wrap up tonight's ball game in 60 seconds. That's where our awards are being presented at midcourt, and let's have a wrap-up now of tonight's game, won by Artesian, 55-44, to 44. and first of all, with the team stats of the game, here's Doug Thompson. Okay, first off in the rebounding department, even though we had the 11 point difference in this game, both teams fought pretty evenly on the, in the rebounding. Both teams ending up with a total of 40 rebounds. But the whole story is told in the percentage from the field here tonight. Uh, Artesian, or pardon me, Ethan was very, very cold in that second half. They only made a total of eight shots out of about 30 attempted. And they ended up with a 28% for the game, 19 out of 66. So that's one of the big reasons right there. Meanwhile, Artesian took a total of 59 shots from the field, converted on 24 of those, uh, finishing the game at 40%, which is a pretty good shooting average. From the free throw line, Ethan went to the line nine times, converted six times. And uh, Artesian went to the line 16 times and converted seven. In the turnover department, once again, we were pretty even. Ethan had 17 turnovers, and Artesian had 15. Okay, thank you very much, Doug. There's our team stats for the evening. And a little recap of the game just for a second here now. It was very close at the end of the first half, 24 to 22. In fact, Artesian was up by only two points. But then the third quarter was the difference as Artesian came out, shot 8 for 16, and Ethan only shot 1 for 18. So that was the big difference there. And from then on, it was all Artesian. They just continued to maintain that lead. They had it 43 to 26 at the end of the third quarter. Again, the final score, Artesian 55, Ethan 44. Let's take a look now at our uh, scoring in the ball game tonight. First of all, for uh, the Ethan Rustlers, who, as Doug said, were uh, plagued again by poor shooting tonight. Of course, they had the bad shooting last night against Hanson, but managed to come up with that win uh, in the last second of play. So two nights in a row, Ethan could not find the middle of the basket. Steve Oster, again, was the high scorer, finishing with 16 points. Paul Muth ended up with 10. Kenny Vogel with 7. Rich Hone also with 7. Brad Pitts with 2. And Steve Pitts with 2. For the winning Artesian Rams, 19 points for Steve Clyde, and he carried them pretty much tonight. Clyde has scored well in the first game, but not too much in the semifinal, but 19 tonight. Other scores pretty well balanced after that. Gary May with 10. Dale Sundstrom had 7. Donovan Wenz with 7. Dave Jones had 6. Larry Turner with 2. And Kevin Dahl with a total of 5 points. So again, the leading scores, Oster for Ethan with 16, and Steve Clyde for Artesian with a total of 19. So, believe it or not, a long week of district competition comes to the end, and... Uh, Kind of happy to say that it is. I'm sure you can tell by my voice that this is game number 15 of the week. And sorry if it uh, didn't sound too good tonight, but uh, we tried our best. And I think we got through it all right anyway. Could make myself understood at least. So uh, again, the Salem Cubs winning the uh, District 19 championship this year. The District 20 championship goes here tonight to our, the Artesian Rams. And the District 24 championship to the Trip Wildcats. So that's our three champions for this year. It's been a real fine week of district tournaments. We've had some real outstanding close ball games. Couldn't have asked for anything more. We had the overtime game, and a number of them decided by one or two points. A lot of evenly matched teams. We saw some good ball clubs this year. All the representatives, I'm sure, will represent their districts very well. And we saw a lot of good young ball clubs, too, that played real well. I'm thinking, of course, of the Bridgewater Wildcats. And there were a couple of other clubs that are going to have a lot of personnel back for next year. And so we'll be looking forward again to the start of the next year's season. But, of course, for these three teams that won the district tournaments, it's not over for them. 
The biggest is yet to come. The region tournament's coming up next weekend. So we wish good luck to all the teams in the victories in their district competitions. And uh, I know that I enjoyed it very much. You can hear the cheer go up from the court as the Artesian Rams are walking off now with their district championship trophy. There are fans, of course, very, very happy. So again, in our first game tonight, trip over armor, 62.